Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me over here. So today I'm going to talk a bit more, a bit about um, restaurants in the context of how restaurants must evolve to prepare for the next billion consumers. And you know, we all know the restaurant industry is one of the largest industries in India. And at Dynard, we're doing a lot of great work for the industry to you know, get customers in. But before I get there and um, explain a bit uh, more about this, the restaurant industry and how it's evolving, I think it's important to sort of just um, take you through our journey and how Dynard as a, as a business has evolved over the last few years. Um, so we started Dynard in 2011, and today it's the largest dining out and restaurant tech platform. When we started off, we only were a consumer-facing um, product where we started off with discovery and reservations in 2011 as the chief, um, as the main sort of product. But over a period of time, what we realized um, in very sort of fairly quick time is that in India, being uh, sort of um, the market and the consumer market it is, that discovery and reservations did not actually fulfill or was not required all the time a consumer was dining out. So we had to look at our model um, as well to figure out what we need to do. And the one thing that we looked at, which was constant across all dining instances, was that a consumer needed to sort of pay their restaurant bill. So we launched a feature called Dine Out Pay over in uh, 2016. And today it's the largest F&B loyalty program in India where you can pay your restaurant bills at more than 20,000 restaurants um, through the Dine Out app. So now we had reservations and we had payments, but we still had a small um, section of people who did not want to sort of do anything, but still wanted to save money. And that's always been the premise of, um, of Dine Out, that we help you save money on your restaurant bills. So we actually um, acquired a product called Gourmet Passport, which gives you a one plus one across 2,000 of the best restaurants. And it's a walk-in product, so you don't need to reserve, you don't need to pay your bill, you just, um, at the time of um, ordering, just say that you're a Gourmet Passport member and you sort of um, get uh, one plus one of various um, main courses, buffets, etc. But the point is that it's, it's the only program that in spite of the entire turmoil of the last six months with the whole logout campaign has not changed um, at all. And then we also had a program called Dine Out Plus, which is a five star only membership program. While we were doing all of this on the diner side, this was mainly to help restaurants acquire consumers. But we were dealing with a lot of restaurants over here, and we realized that their problems go a lot beyond just customer acquisition. They needed to do a lot of, um, they needed tech to actually manage a lot of operations. So over the last um, few years, we acquired two other businesses, mainly Inresto, which is a CRM, and Talkus, which is the POS. And um, it's a complete SaaS suite of software for the industry with 10 plus uh, modules, which a restaurant can sort of pick and choose. And the reason why I'm saying all of this is because over the last few years, we've been able to evolve our entire business. And today, um, we seat close to 120 million diners annually at our partner restaurants. We're processing close to nearly a billion dollars of uh, GMV at our partner restaurants, and we're now live in eight countries. And the reason why this is important is to give you context about how big the actual Indian restaurant industry is. So just to... Um, the total market size currently of the Indian restaurant industry is approximately $60 billion. And the number of restaurants operating in the organized space is nearly half a million. So what we talk about the organized space is restaurants where actual bills are being generated. And that equates to approximately a market size of approximately $25 billion. But um, the challenge remains that the number of diners that are being seated annually at these half a million restaurants is 4 billion covers. So think about that number, right? That's four billion diners are dining out annually in India. However, the challenge that the industry faces is the restaurants do not recognize who the consumers are. Think about your experience the last time you went out at a restaurant. How many times were you recognized um, by restaurants or the ban managers using technology? The restaurants do not know who the what the consumer spending patterns is. They do not know dining out patterns. They do not know how to engage and retain diners. And this leads to the current state of operations in most restaurants and bars in India today where there's a lot of chaos on the restaurant floor. So think about a Friday night or a Saturday night, you go into a busy bar and you're waiting at the bar for um, either queuing up to get drinks or you know, there's a lot of, um, you're at the table and then it's always uh, 15, 20, 30 minutes before um, your drinks come. 
And sometimes at the dining in or seated restaurants, basically um, it's busy, you're waiting there, you're sitting there, it takes a long time for either the menu to come or it takes a long time for the food to come to you. And all of this actually results in a lot of loss of revenue for restaurants. Um, because obviously they either you're an unsatisfied customer or your table turnaround time is very poor. And as a result, you're probably a restaurant is not able to seat as many consumers as they would probably have if everything was running in a very efficient uh, manner. We also sort of um, looked at what's happening inside the restaurants. And through, and we realized that even though over the last few years, um, restaurants in India and globally have adopted technology and more and more are going towards it, the one thing that has never changed inside the restaurants is menus. So since restaurants have been in operation over the last you know, few centuries, the only thing that has never changed is how people order. So every time you walk into a restaurant, you get a paper menu with um, 150, 200 dishes, and you just sort of end up sort of being lost looking at the menu. The paper menu has not been changed also because from a restaurant's perspective, it's very cumbersome to change menus. It's very difficult to sort of have multiple versions of the menus. Reprinting is a challenge. So the disadvantage of uh, paper-based menus are static pricing, no opportunities cross-sell or upsell, um, removing out-of-stock items becomes very difficult, which all ultimately leads to poor customer experience. And essentially, most consumers also, when they enter a restaurant, all of us tend to ask the server, what is good at your restaurant? And that actually is a very sort of a answer which is very difficult for anyone to give because most menus have approximately 400 plus items. But the biggest challenge that most restaurants today face is that 20% of the dishes get ordered 80% of the time, but the restaurant needs to prepare for everything that's there on the menu, which leads to a lot of wastage. Also, it's not possible to recommend high selling items because um, a server might not know everything. And it becomes very difficult for restaurants to push high margin items as well, because high margin obviously items will lead to a better profit profitability, but it becomes really difficult to sort of push that on a, a sort of without actually using technology. So the industry did try to evolve. Uh, few years back, um, five to six years back, where we saw a few a lot of restaurants going down the way of digital menus, and I'm going to call this Digital Menu 1.0. Um, basically, what it was was that um, restaurants got tablets in and were placing them inside the restaurants where you had the menus and you could uh, browse through the menu, but it was only a browse feature that was there. However, the adoption for the industry was low. And the main reason why this did not sort of pick up through was because um, tablets required a huge upfront investment. Um, very difficult to keep charging tablets. Um, they would run out of battery very quickly. Um, limited tablets available at restaurants. And ultimately, they were not connected to the point of sale system. So as a result, even though the tablets were there and you had the menus digitized, you could not actually, or a restaurant could not actually figure out how um, or what or how certain dishes are performing because there was no, it was not, it was actually difficult to use data analytics um, to actually study what's happening. So while digital menus came and went um, a few years back, it's also interesting to note that what, is, what has been happening globally over the last 12 months within the restaurant industry. So dynamic pricing, you know, that's a concept where um, we all know that as being part of the hospitality industry, dynamic pricing exists everywhere. We've seen it in airlines, we've seen it in hotels, we've seen it in cabs, where the demand, if, when the demand, uh, so, uh, demand is high and supply is low, prices sort of go up. However, it's not been possible ever inside a restaurant. And you think about it, right? A restaurant typically prices a beer at 400 rupees on a Saturday when there are 500 people inside the restaurant and they still want price the same uh, on a Tuesday afternoon where there's no one. And the only form of dynamic pricing that today restaurants sort of follow is discounting, like a flat discount across all um, items or uh, happy hours or something like that. So it's not actually possible to do it across the um, individual items. However, across the world now, people have started to experiment with dynamic pricing. 
So, um, and the reason for that also is because uh, each dish has a very different cost structure as well. So it should make sense that, you know, you, a restaurant should be able to price um, different di items differently. Um, so these are just a few of the things that's been happening globally across the world, how restaurants are cashing in with best pricing strategy, restaurant uh, launches with Uber-style uh, pricing model. And the idea is that across the world, um, for the last 12 months, whether it's the US or Europe or China, this has been happening. But it's not been sort of possible in India um, till now. However, over the last few year, um, months, we've been working on a product which is called Dine-In. And you, can, you guys can feel free to scan this code with your, uh, with your phone. The idea is that when we sort of look at it, and when we enter a restaurant today, we're all connected with, via our phones. And why not, the question that we asked ourselves was, why can we not turn our own mobile phones into uh, menus at the restaurants? So the idea was very simple. You, um, now you walk into a restaurant, instead of being given a physical menu, you actually have QR codes either on the table or across multiple places, and you just scan this code and you open the menu on your phone. And the best part about that is that every single person on the table can sort of scan that menu and have it on their phone. So instead of having to ask for multiple menus, uh, which you know, it's gonna take time to get, you have this uh, feature now. How it works is very, very simple. Um, we all know that a picture is worth a thousand words. However, it's nowhere more apt than within the restaurant industry because you have words describing dishes, which we actually have no idea how it's gonna look like until now. So we've now digitized the entire menu for the restaurants. We've taken pictures of dishes and we've now put it out there for the consumer to um, sort of browse through, and they can, uh, we've uploaded some videos of signature dishes as well, and you can now actually look what the dish looks like, and that's it, you know, you can uh, sort of go and order. Also, if you think about your own dining experiences of the last few times you went out, we typically are very conservative in what we order when we go to a restaurant, and we like to stick to what we are familiar with because we don't want to have a bad experience in terms of a dish, but also because we don't know what a dish is going to look like. And because we don't know that, we always tend to stick to what we're comfortable with. So this now changes that because all of a sudden now, every dish that's there on the menu now has an image attached to it, and we all can sort of browse through it ourselves, and we all can sort of order. The other things that the, this enables a restaurant to do is do videos of special um, chef dishes or some things which the chef would want to, or the restaurant would want to promote. It also now intelligently using a lot of analytics and um, machine learning at the back can actually suggest intelligent combos. So typically what happens is that when you typically go to a restaurant and order, X, uh, let's say if I order pizza, you would want to order a beer or et cetera. But now, basis individual consumers um, ordering pattern, the uh, system can automatically throw up recommendations to sort of suit, their, uh, suit the consumer's um, choices. Um, and offers can be run, multiple offers can be run individually for consumers. So think about, right, today the way offers run inside a restaurant are very static. It's a 15, 20, 25% uh, discount or a free beer or et cetera, and that's the same for every single consumer. Why not have different offers for different consumers? But more importantly, can I have a higher offer or a higher discount on a high margin item and a lower offer or lower discount on a low margin item? So if I order a pizza, I can maybe push a glass of wine or if I order two bottles of wine, I can push a bottle of beer, uh, the full bottle of wine. So there are multiple benefits for the consumers and we're moving to a, uh, augmented reality as well. So now you can uh, scan the menu as well, uh, the code, and you can see how a dish is gonna be, dish is gonna look like in a sort of AR. And from a restaurant's perspective, there are a lot of benefits because ultimately the objective is we increase revenue for them and we reduce cost and improve efficiency for the restaurant. However, what we are now going to do is 
completely changed the way brand engagement has been happening through, con um, through contextual marketing inside the restaurant. Now think about it, right? We're inside a restaurant, we have our phones, we're ordering, on, um, we're ordering from our phones, and people want, consumers want um, instant gratification to happen. And nowhere is it more true than inside a restaurant where I've just ordered something, my bill is about to come, can I actually get a discount on that? So we've built in a lot of uh, uh, tools for, age, for, market, for companies to sort of market. So, pep, so FMCG companies can do uh, promote inside the menu in real time offers. Um, same with alcohol companies. And you, we can also promote other brands to sort of do a very contextual marketing that if you want a 10, 15, 20% off, it's not necessary for the restaurant to fund that discount. We can get other companies to fund the discount um, on behalf of, their, of uh, showing videos or showing some ads or et cetera. And we're also tying up with a lot of uh, the mobility companies to sort of um, get rides to and fro. So the idea is that how restaurants will operate in 2021 is very simple. You walk into a restaurant, you don't have to wait um, to sort of get in. And this is also applicable when there's a long queue outside the restaurant. Typically what happens at busy restaurants is you're waiting 25, 30 minutes to get in. And then once you get in, you have to then get the menu and then spend another 25, 30 minutes to get the food. And as a result of that, it's nearly 40 minutes or 50 minutes before your food comes. So now as soon as you get in the queue, you can Look at the menu, you can browse through it, you can order, and the food's gonna, be, uh, food's gonna come to you a lot faster than uh, what's happening today. And finally, we're working with a lot of other um, use cases, so we're working with stadiums and concerts and events to do the same thing. So if you're now at a stadium in between matches or at concerts, you know, at, during the break there is a huge rush at the, uh, at the, at the uh, stalls for food, etc. You can now actually do all of this uh, beforehand. So what's important to, or what I'm trying to say over here is that as the consumer is moving a lot more digitally, as mobile phones are happening out there and is, as it's going to grow, um, it's important for traditional businesses such as restaurants as well to evolve in, and um, change their business models to sort of um, grow with the demand from the consumer. Um, with that, I'm done. So thank you. Thanks a lot.